What's up, everybody? It's Gary here from SaferWholesale.com. As we all know, you guys are pretty much going to be receiving your ATV, your go-kart, your scooter, your dirt bike, your power sport here real soon in the next couple days, coming weeks, you know, uh, whatever it is. And we want to make sure that the product is number one, you can start it. Number two, if you have any issues at all whatsoever, you can go ahead and troubleshoot it. And uh, by doing so, we're gonna go over a couple things here today. Um, and those are gonna include basically your fuse, your carburetor, your spark plug coil wire, the CDI box, the starter solenoid, and your starter motor. Now, first off, Dave, when we go ahead and uh, start an ATV, when you first basically get it together or put it uh, you know, together out of the box, um, you know, could you kind of run through us, through, through with us uh, exactly what to do here? Sure, there's a few basic things once you receive your ATV that you want to go through. The very first thing is you want to make sure that your kill switch is off. So you'll have it in the crank position. You, of course, want to make sure your key switch is on, showing the neutral light. And then if you have a remote kill switch, you want to make sure oh, yeah, that your kill switch is unlocked right there. Really important because otherwise it, it doesn't reset itself and you'll basically crank it, crank it, and they'll never start. Exactly. So uh, now keep in mind we were basically showing this is a 3125R 125. This is the 110. So basically same exact um, features. Um, and when you go to start it, so when you want to go start our units, you want to either apply the foot brake or the handbrake. That is a safety feature that needs to be done. You also want to make sure if your unit comes with one of these pull kill switches that this is installed. So once you have the brake pull, you go ahead and give it a little bit of gas to start it. Right. Now you'll see that if your unit does not want to start right away, there are some other preliminary steps that you need to take to make sure that your unit runs. First being, let's make sure that we have our gas on. On each of these units, you'll find a gas shutoff valve. Right. It's usually going to be located either on the left or right side, accessible right away. So you want to make sure that that is on. Once we can verify that that is on, we can check for a choke. Almost all carbureted ATVs have a choke. The choke is going to be a brass lever. So I would take this ATV, put it on its side. Let's put it on its side. And here we go. So up is choke. As you can see, you got your little flashlight there. So up is choke, down is run. Again, up is choke, down is run. So Unless it is otherwise indicated, it will always be up is choke, down is run. On some of our ATVs, like these smaller ones over here, just so you know that there is an indicator. So if you see an indication different from what we're saying, do whatever the carburetor says. Right, again, once it says choke like this, as you can see here, right in the video, you've got up is choke, down is run. Now, one other thing, now we're talking about carburetors, um, obviously in the video here. Biggest thing is, now this one doesn't have an idle screw. Let's show them one that does. Something over here to the Blazer 9. Okay, here's another ATV. This one does or does not? This one does have an idle screw. The idle screw is gonna be on the side of the carburetor. There you go. And you can just use either a pocket knife, a little tiny flathead screwdriver. And what you want to do is you want to do it in small, tiny increments. You do not want to go full one way or full the other. That's okay, I got it. And then just kind of give it a little tick or back the other way, depending on what your idle calls for. If you're too low. Right, let's show them on, uh, you know, we can start this guy up here for a second and kind of show him. Does this one have the idle, idle I screw? I believe that this carburetor is sealed. Is it? It is. Okay, well then start it up. We can also show them on the... Uh, the other way to go ahead and get that adjusted. Now, right here, you can also adjust it by unscrewing right here. As you can see, it wants to take off, okay? So this, right here, you have your idle adjustment right here on the cable, okay? So we'll screw that in, and then obviously you're gonna back off or tighten this nut, hence turning down that idle, okay? So very, very important. Um, you can see here on this one, you've got your nice idle adjustment there. So that's on the 110. We also have the 125. So again, a couple different adjustments on there. So uh, let's show them where the fuse is on some of these. Okay, so on pretty much every unit that we have here, aside from go-karts, your fuse is gonna be located right next to the battery. On the 110s, it's gonna be underneath the seat and you'll see it right there. If you're having problems starting, you wanna look for a fuse that's possibly broken on the inside, you'll see a tiny little filament in there. If that filament is damaged or broken, bent in any way, there's a bad fuse, replace it. Your unit should come with two in the manual, and also, if it's just removed, sometimes they pop out just from shipping, or if you're 
transporting it. Take a look for that. Second thing, because you're right next to the battery, go ahead and just kind of give the terminals a wiggle. Make sure those are tight. That is very important. That will stop your unit. From and also out. now, let me ask you this, as far as the battery charging, what do they need as far as voltage, amperage, the whole nine, so, when, if they have a tester? If you do have a tester, you would like to have at least 12.4 volts. Anything lower than that, you'll probably only get two to three cranks out of it and the unit won't start. Um, these batteries do not have, or these units do not have alternators. So if you crank the unit 20 times, you may have a dead battery at this point. So you need and a trickle charger. Put it on a trickle charger. Always get a trickle charger. You guys can get those if they don't come with your unit, which typically they do not. Um, you can buy them off of Amazon. They're like 20 bucks. Yes. Okay. So fuse we went over. We kind of went over the carburetor. Now, obviously, the carburetor is going to be in many different spots in all these units, but obviously it's right on the motor, so that kind of speaks for itself. The spark plug wire coil. Let's go over that for two seconds here. So now if you've passed the point of starting, you checked and saw your carburetor is adjusted properly, your key is on, your kill switch is on, you want to come over and take a look at your spark plug. Go ahead, right here on the side of the engine, there will be a spark plug cap. Take that off. As long as the unit is shut off and not running, you will have no problems. You will not get injured. Go ahead and unscrew this spark plug. 16 millimeter generally will do the trick. And you just want to kind of take it off and inspect the tip. If you do not see any gap between the electrode and the tip, you need to have that adjusted. That will also stop your unit from running. So if you're having hard starting or anything like that, that is the next step that you want to go to make sure that your spark plug is okay. And make sure it's gapped, make sure it's got, again, spark and all that. Um, obviously, the coil, how do you tell if it's good or bad? Is there a way? There is a way. Um, if you're comfortable to do this, what you would do is you would remove the spark plug, as I just showed you. And all you need to do is actually just ground out the spark plug with the coil. So go ahead and put your spark plug back in the coil. Make sure that nobody is around to start it while you're not ready. And put it up against the bolt or something like that. As long as this is grounded, you'll be able to get a spark and test for it. Okay, let me see. Oh, there we go. We can see it. And if you can That's see perfect. a little bit of blue spark. Yep, yep. That's just a simple way to test. You want to make sure that your fingers are nowhere near, but it is pretty easy to so do. So we know that that means the coil is good. That would mean the coil is good. And we're getting basically where spark. So that's pretty much where it ends as far as, hey, am I getting spark? Exactly. Okay, so you know you're getting spark. So the other thing that you just want to check is, hey, do you have gas? Go ahead and check right. just to make sure oh, yeah, that you have gas. Super we, important. Super important, you know, we can verify that. Obviously, we, make sure you have gas, but okay, so you can see that this machine obviously is gas, but the other thing also on the carburetor, if you come over to this side, obviously you can see that the fuel is either on or off. Right now it's to the on position. What you do want to do though, Dave, right, is if you want to make sure, you can also even pull off this gas line right here, if you can do that, um, just to kind of show that we've got gas coming into the carburetor. Otherwise, if you've got a little bucket or pan, you just kind of let it go and run into yep. it. You see, we got some gas. Okay, we're good there. We know we're good. We're getting gas into that carburetor. Slip and it right uh, back over. That's right. And so now we know that obviously that's not a troubleshooting uh, problem that basically we have to overcome. So we know we're getting gas. We're good there. Um, so we've checked the fuse. We've checked carburetor, uh, the spark plug, wire coil the cdi box do we CDI have a box we do have a cdi box and we can actually do it on this unit as well okay it's over here same side as everything the cdi box if you have a problem to where you're not getting any spark and your unit is not starting the cdi box may be the next thing you're looking for take a look for one of these little green connectors here there's not much we can do to test it but the simple easy way is go ahead and just disconnect it and listen for sand if you hear that it sounds like sand give it a shake like a little shaker egg you might have a bad CDI box. If you're not hearing anything, it's probably okay. Go ahead and put that right back together. Now, what is that basically, what does the CDI do? Is that anything? The that CDI like? box is, or is uh, in control of the ignition, basically. Without the CDI box, you won't have enough amperage to supply to the spark. Okay, box. so basically, if we've got spark, we've got uh, the fuse, we've got the carbs good, we've got fuel, we've got everything else, pretty much... Obviously, the next thing is going to be, what, the starter solenoid to, to start possibly jump it? Exactly. We can start looking at a start solenoid. It's now, easier. And, come take a look at this 150. And again, here, let's see. Now, guys, gals, men and women, check it out. So here's the deal. Now, we just did this on the 3125R, which is, again, not everyone's going to have the same exact machine. 
You might have, again, this, uh, the 50cc, you might have a 125, maybe a 110. Now, the 110s are basically all the same thing. Is that correct? Yes. So pretty much the same thing. The CDI boxes look exactly the same. The coil looks the same, even on a go-kart, on an ATV. So maybe let's go around here on this 150. I've got the camera at the, uh, the, the ATV here. And so basically, again, same couple things. By the way, change the oil, 10W30 oil. It's very important, right, with yes. any... With power any sport. that you receive from Safer Wholesale, the most important thing is after the first 30 minutes of riding, you need to change your oil. 10W30 is recommended for most of our machines. Look for any stickers or tags on the unit themselves that will explain if it requires different oil. But it is very important that you change the oil. All of our engines come with a break-in oil that is not, it does not have a thick enough viscosity to maintain the life of the engine. So you must change your engine oil. Cool. So we've got that. As far as the carb, now this one's a little bit different. You know, again, this is uh, what? This one has the automatic choke, right? Yes. On the 150s and up, we do have automatic chokes. That pretty much means that you do not have to flip that lever up or down to get it to start. The unit should be able to do that by itself. Okay. Um, However, if you do start to run into a problem where we've already gone through the rest of the troubleshooting and you still don't have a start, we can come and check the solenoid. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. It's pretty easy, easy if you're comfortable with it. Go ahead and turn your key switch on. This one has some cool underglow effect here. But uh, to show you right here, all of our starch solenoids, they all look exactly the same. They are a two-post solenoid. One positive, one negative, just like that, if you can see that. Yeah, let's get right in there, hang on. Okay, so it's basically, uh, what, copper-colored cylinder, yep, we got a brass, um, and basically, what is that? So, what this does is this is what transfers the key switch to the starter itself. And if you're having problems starting your unit, what you may be asked to do is jump the solenoid. And what they mean by that is grab some sort of screwdriver or anything with some sort of insulated end on it. And very simply, you just want to cross one and the other. And what will happen is it will instantly start if you have a good starter. And so there you go. You saw a little bit of spark. We got the unit started. And again, that was without pushing that start button on there. Right. So if you have a starting issue, you have now bypassed the start button itself and also the solenoid. So if your unit still does not start and you have that little bit of spark, you may have a bad starter. If you're on the phone with this, uh, our troubleshooting guy and he asks you, hey, this is the problem, the solenoid, this is what he's talking about here. If you jump this solenoid and it does nothing, you may have a starter issue. If you jump the solenoid and you hear a click or no click, you may have a bad solenoid. Gotcha. So basically, um, lastly, now the, the like this one has a starter on it right here because um, it's a this one's a little six B um, plus six B plus. Now on this one again to jump the oh one other thing I want to show. Let's do the tether here really quick. So yeah. just like on the other units, we have a. And again, since it's carbureted, sometimes you gotta, yeah, put it halfway, get it going. There you go. Now this one here, once again, to go ahead and get it running and keeping it running, and again, adjustment of the of your idle here as well, due to the fact that this one here does not have. See, right now, it's very high the idle. Now to go ahead and turn that down, we'd simply screw that in just a hair. Now again, this one's got lights on it. Where's the lights? They are. Yeah. Okay, so this one's got the lights option as well. And again, it does have a starter getting back to that. Um, basically, how do we jump that if we need to? So same thing, we're gonna look for the solenoid on this. Now uh, where is it? The solenoids on these are in the rear. Okay. So this one's going to be actually located underneath under, there, underneath this piece of plastic. So you take maybe these screws off so you can get to it a little easier and then you're going to have to cut the zip ties there. And obviously your battery's here. Um, where's the fuse on this one? Likewise, right next to the battery. Okay, so again, you have to kind of find it where it is. Um, now I know we wanted to go over something on the back of that 200 GKM go-kart as well. You want to show them the tether? Okay. Yeah, 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 let's do that. So just like on the 110s, we have a kill switch tether. Pull that off, 
If right you're there. having a starting issue on your little 50, it could be your tether. Make sure that that is in. Here, let's show them basically what it's got underneath here. This button here, okay? So if for some reason, obviously, if it comes out, the kill switch is then on, right? Yes. So um, always make sure that that's plugged in and on. Otherwise, you're going to have an issue there. You won't be able to start it. So again, 10W30, always change that oil. Uh, let's see here. We went over the fuse. We went over the carburetor. We went over the spark plug wire, CDI box, the starter solenoid, and the basically the starter motor. We can kind of show you that um, over here as well. And then uh, what do we got going so here? So from everything we've looked over, we've looked over ATVs. Maybe you don't have an ATV. Maybe you have a go-kart. Go-karts are a little bit different because they don't really have a seat that anything's stored under. Almost all of the go-karts have this little electrical box here. Essentially, everything we've covered will be in this electrical box. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's pretty easy then. Yep. It's very easy. So here's your fuse here. Uh -huh. Here's your little solenoid right here that we talked about. Here's your CDI box. All of those components are in the same area. So you got that right in the back. Now, again, this is a go-kart. Same exact thing. Now, this one, actually, this motor is pretty much the same, right, as that is the uh, 175 over there. So this is a 200. So, again, it's considered a 200. It still has, like, a 170, I don't know, 5cc or 178cc, whatever it is. So, again, same type of setup on this, but it, like you said, it's all electrical box. It specifically states right there, electrical box. Correct. And everything, of course, except for the carburetor, which is located here in the back, and these have fuel tanks that now are visible. With an ATV, the fuel tank is under all the plastic. The shutoff valve should be right here in the open. So if you okay, have let me any show gas that. issues, show that. your shutoff valve will be right here in the open, which is nice. Yeah, so again, you got that, and it's obviously right here, and it goes left to right. And then obviously your fuel filter here. Same thing, always check, make sure you're getting gasoline into that carburetor. Same rule applies for any gas engine, right? Exactly. Same thing. Uh, tether wise, let's see. Okay, here's the 3125R. Here's your fuse again. Same thing. I just kind of wanted to come over here, kind of show everyone that it's it's basically uh, right beside itself on the battery there. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Blazer 9, same deal. Battery is right here on the side. And as you can see, the fuse is located not too far from it. Okay, so we've got that one. Um, what other problems usually when, uh, what about compression and stuff like that? Sometimes there's issues with that. I mean, obviously, right out of the box, you pretty much don't. I mean, how many out of, say, 100 that we put together are you going to have an issue with that? Probably less than one. Probably. But I, I will say that if you, if you do get to the point of a compression issue at that point, when we went over, go ahead and rewind to the point where we removed the spark plug. Once that spark plug is out, you now have a direct guide into the cylinder head. Go ahead and put your thumb over that. If you put your thumb over that hole, all you'll feel is air blowing out. If you can't, if your thumb is not being blown away by that air, chances are your unit does not have enough compression. Cool. Um, that, of course, is once everything else has been exhausted. So that's kind of the next step, but it's not too common. Now, what about the GVX UTVs? Let's at least kind of go over some things in the showroom over here. Okay, let's go take a look. Um, so we can take a look at some of these guys and gals. Again, we're trying to make sure that when you guys get your power sport, again, you're going to take it out of the crate, assemble it, and we do have plenty of assembly videos um, for you guys how to do that. Um, but again, we're trying to make it as simple, as painless as possible, and as fun as possible to get your ATV assembled, your go-kart assembled, your UTV assembled, and riding as uh, you know, fast and painless as possible. So this one right here is a uh, 400cc. This is the Predator 400XL. Um, we could go over some of the stuff on the Mini Jeep, but now these, I mean, is this a totally different machine or what type of issues? It's, it's only different in some ways. Things like where the battery's located. Batteries are located under the seats. Fuse as well. So where the rest of the engine would be here in the back, everything you need to worry about, filling gas, spark plug, carburetor, fuel shutoff, the battery is located all the way in the front. Oh, look at that. Okay, gotcha. So see this one here, and I assume where's the fuse? The fuse is going to be just slightly down line. I'm sure if we okay, pull these up. Okay, you probably got to pull it Yeah, this is your fuse line right here. Okay. So it would be underneath this panel here, which you probably just take this battery out and remove. Yep. But the fuses are always close by. Okay. 
And uh, so guys and gals, so that's basically that. And then you have your motor, which obviously is in the rear. So this one's on the website. I know uh, Jessica's asking, this one's what, $72.99 plus freight, plus shipping and the uh, taxes and the fees and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that one there, uh, that's your cost on that. Um, what is this? This is an air box here. Looks like. Correct, yes. You have a cylinder style air filter there, which completely removes. And then our carb is still right up there. Um, now, we've had all, for whatever reason, and thank God and luckily and whatnot, we've always had pretty darn good luck with these out of the gate, right? We've had great luck. Sometimes with the UTVs. Um, like one time, what? We had the horn, you turn it on and the horn would just stick or? Yes, yeah, sometimes somewhere along the assembly line, one wire goes in the wrong terminal and you may find something weird. Right. Um, it just kind of is case by case basis. It's not something we generally come across. So it's very hard to kind of pinpoint what you might experience if that would happen. Gotcha. So now again, this one's the 200 Pathfinder we have. Again, it's your typical go-kart, same type of thing. Um, what about the 125 GKG over here? So the 125 GKG, just like the other go-kart we looked at, the 200, you're going to be looking for an electrical box if you have any sort of issue. And just like the other one, you have your electrical box right here in the back. Air filters right up here, carburetors right on top of the motor. So yeah, this one, and again, your starter. Okay, let's get back to the starter. How do you have to, if you ever have to jump this, what do you do? You so, basically just take a uh, battery. If you need to jump this, yes, you can uh, take those two wires we saw from the solenoid, connect them to a battery, and they will actually turn this motor over. Generally, you can just jump the solenoid and indicate whether or not the solenoid or it, whether or not the starter is working. Um, but if you would need to do that, those two wires that were on the solenoid, you can take those off and apply them to a battery, 12 volts, low amperage, and uh, check your starter. Cool. Sounds good. And again, your gas tank, same thing. Like you said, same rule applies. You got it right there. We'll go ahead and push this one back. Now, this one, boys and girls, does still have. Um, it's got your uh, turn signals on it. You still have your headlights and the whole nine. So once again, you know, you can always end up or run into, uh, you know, some electrical issues, right? Yes. And... Total case-by-case -case basis, sometimes you can find something that's very simple. You see a wire, maybe not connected. Look for things that are simple first before you start, you know, tearing into it. Just look for a simple connector that's maybe just a disconnect or chipping, and uh, generally, it won't let you down. Right, okay, cool. Last but not least, well, two more things I want to talk about. First off, the mini Jeeps, and then second, the dirt bikes. Now, the dirt bikes seem pretty pretty easy because of the fact that everything's right there. The nice thing about most of our dirt bikes here is that they don't need batteries. They're all kickstart with a stator, so you can pretty much take out the fuse and battery troubleshooting portion if you have a dirt bike. But like everything else, you're still going to have a carburetor. Now, this one, again, like we were show, showing you before, some of them are gold, some of them are silver, whatever. Up is choke, down is run. Correct. So, and you can also see right here, behind the choke oh, lever, yeah, right, right, this right. is your idle screw right there. Right. So no need to go ahead and mess with anything up there. You would do it all right here on the actual carburetor. Once again, it's just every one of them are kind of a little bit same. They're same, but a little bit, you know, it's different. It's the same theory for everything, but slightly different application for each one. Um, yes, and then if we're looking at Jeeps, now there's two different types of Jeeps we have. We have a mid-engine style Jeep, which is this Jeep right here. So if you're looking under your hood, you're not going to see much but the gas tank. This is, yeah, exactly, just the gas That's tank. That's all you'll get. And then on the back here, you'll see that we have a, the engine is actually behind the vehicle. So let's put it here. Take a look underneath. Yeah, you got your motor back there. And yet the electrical box, yeah. right there. Right, okay. So again, same rule applies. Same rule applies. You do have also the other style where your engine is right here up front. Now this one is the Crusade on the website, just so you guys are, if you're wondering. Um, and again, this one here, you've got your motor here, everything here, you know, um, everything's right in the front. You've got your battery in the front as well. Now you may be worried that sometimes, if let's say you have a Jeep and you find that this is not connected to anything. There are breathers installed on most of our units here. So if you see something like this, where it's connected off the top here and nothing's connected to it, this is just a breather. This is the filtering element right here at the end. Okay, cool. All right, um, and again, same rule applies. These guys have the choke that I did notice. They're right here, so when you go to start it, you got it right there. So um, on this Jeep right here, we've got, again, the Crusade, and then we have the GR3. So the GR3, the GR2, a couple different models that we do have, once again, in stock. So this one, as you saw, has the uh, motor in the front. This one's got the mid-engine, more or less, in the rear. So 
Again, if you guys are looking for the 110s, same rule applies. 3050Cs, the Hawk 6, lots of different uh, goodies on there. And uh, we do have... We do carry and uh, I'm sorry, we do have the on the website saferwholesale.com forward slash support videos. Go ahead and click the link above or below and you guys can see all the different videos. We have a 110 on there, the, the, the 50 cc's, a lot of the 125 ATVs. Again, same rule applies. It may not be exactly the same ATV, same go-kart, same dirt bike, but again, the carburetor issues, the CDI, the starter, the solenoid, the fuse, all these different problems, pretty much the same, right? Yes, basic essential checks just to make sure that your unit is going to work right or if you're having any issues, those things should solve your problems right away. Cool. So if you guys have any questions, please let us know. If you need to uh, submit a support ticket, saferwholesale.com forward slash support, and you can uh, it'll bring you right to the ticket parts page. You guys can go ahead and submit a claim. Um, you can ask us any questions. You can call us toll-free, 866-606-3991. The base reason we did this video today was to make sure that you guys, when you receive your ATV, your go-kart, your UTV, uh, four-wheeler, whatever it is, we want to make sure that you guys get up and running as fast and quick as possible with, you know, the least amount of issues that, uh, you know, that you can. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any other questions, like I said, uh, Dave's here. He's here Monday through Friday. But again, you won't be able to talk to him on the phone because he's pretty much in the warehouse supervising everyone else. But like I said, he's our main tech mechanic here. And uh, with any questions, just give us a call. You can speak to John in the parts department. And uh, once again, like I said, watch all of our videos, saferwholesale.com forward slash support videos for more information on, uh, you know, basically any videos. And if you guys have any other recommendations on anything or questions on how to do things, please let us know. Dave, you got any other last comments or? I do not. I mean, is there any last things that you, uh, pretty much what? First off, change your oil. Change your oil. Make sure you got gas in the ATV. Make sure you got gas. Make sure you have spark. Make sure your kill switch is off. Right. Those are the problems. Make sure the you things. squeeze the brake. Squeeze the brake. Also, the brake safeties. There's a foot brake on some of the ATVs, as we showed on the 110s, and there's handbrakes as well. And I know with scooters, you have to make sure that the kickstand is up. Yes. Right? Yes. On some scooters, if you did receive a scooter, some scooters, if the kickstand is down, it will not allow the engine to start to protect the kickstand and your safety. Basically, yeah. You don't want to start it unless, obviously, the kickstand is up. So, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, please call us toll-free 866-606-3991. Thanks. Have a great day.